Um, so let's jump into a bit of the code. Uh, finally opening VS Code, uh, like what, 20 minutes in, which I think is a new record uh, for lateness for me, um, jumping into code, but let's let's get started. So forgetting this uh, centered stuff, this is just for styling this, we don't need to worry about that. Um, let's put together something uh, and, and start from a single place and kind of work our way up a little bit from there. So let's say we have some uh, mock data, I'm gonna put that over here. Uh, and let's just do, let's say, um, export default, and let's put in some data. So uh, the structure here, like I said, is an array of objects um, for the reasons I mentioned before. This is usually the easiest way to store um, tabular data. And it's also very common to get something like this back from uh, you know, a, an endpoint. Like in the form of JSON, you might get something similar to this. So oftentimes you'll be working with data in this format. So um, we're just going to represent it here as well. Let's say that we have rows with an ID. We'll say the ID here is one. Uh, let's just do some people. So name is going to be Lucas. Um, and let's do uh, favorite food as well. And I don't know what my favorite food is, but this particular Lucas really likes to eat lasagna. Let's just say uh, lasagna like so. And that should be good. Let's do one more field. Um, let's do something that needs a bit of, of formatting. So let's just say we had um, we have a date of birth. And this is not my date of birth, funnily enough, but uh, let's do 1901 uh, and then the 1st of January. Well, actually, let's do the, uh, the 23rd so that the, the kind of uh, format doesn't get confusing as to which one's one. And actually, if it's one line, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so uh, 23rd of January, 1901. And let's do another person. And this guy we're going to call um, Lucas. We'll do another guy called um, Larry. And Larry's favorite food is um, linguine. Is that how you spell linguine? I think so. Um, and he was born in 1902, uh, February uh, 15th, and his ID is two. So we have two people here. Um, obviously, you know, very simple data set, and we're going to be uh, rendering this data. So uh, let's start with, I guess, a really simple approach is let's, before we kind of jump into things and, you know, start putting code together for a table implementation, let's first look at how we render this particular table. So I'm going to keep my div here just like to have a wrapper and you know, it's not really a big deal, but let's put in a table and let's input our mock data from, I've got this one here, which I can do that. Uh, and then we are going to do a T head and inside of the T head, we're going to be um, putting in some headers. So we're going to do one for ID, uh, we're going to do name, date of birth, and we're going to do a favorite food, right? And we're going to do a T body here um, it did not complete that, no, it did. Uh, and then we do mock data dot map. I want to destructure, so we're going to get uh, date of birth, favorite food, ID, and name. I like my alphabetical order, so I'm going to do that. And we're going to do uh, a TR. And obviously, we need to pass in a key, which is going to be the ID. Uh, let's do, let's say, the ID here. So let's keep it really simple, right? So we'll do ID, name, um, date of birth, and let's do uh, favorite. Food. Awesome. So now we have this set up and this should work, right? So we've got um, over here, uh, ID, uh, name, date of birth, favorite food, and we've got that information rendered on the page, which is great. Um, this is fine. Let's add in a bit of styling so that it looks a little bit nicer. Um, let's do font size, uh, 20 pixels. How large is 20? 20 is a bit larger. Let's do 32. Uh, that's a bit larger too. And let's put in a few borders because borders are nice. Um, and let's say this is CSS, but let me go over here and let me uh, rename this to SCSS and let me go over here, change that and let me go over here. Does that work or does it have to install? Oh, it does. I don't know if that'll work. But anyways, I'll do TDTH uh, border, do one pixel solid and we'll say light gray type of shade. Um, has that finished loading? It has. Okay, so we got a little bit there and let's do a padding of, let's just say 0.5 rem. Actually, let's just use rem here as well, why not? Um, something like that, we'll do one rem instead. Beautiful. So we have our uh, table over here and we've got um, our fields displayed, which is pretty cool. Um, but now let's say we want to format the date of birth, right? How are we going to do that? Uh, we can probably use some sort of library or, you know, you can do it yourself, but uh, library usually is a bit easier. So what I'm going to do is just cancel that, do yarn add date functions. I'm going to wait for that to install. Shouldn't take too long and we'll start writing the code for that. So we can do import format from date functions like so. And I have to check the source because 
date functions is actually really annoying because the formats it uses are not standard at all. It's, a, it's really weird. Um, we have to first use, I think, parse, which turns it into a date. Um, I, if I am not mistaken, that's not how it's called parse, but let's do yarn watch here. Let's close that. And let's do uh, parse. And you first pass in the type and then the format and then you do. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, date of birth and then the format is going to be, I think it's lowercase d and capital M. Yeah, capital M, uh, it's lowercase d, it's not capital D because capital D is day of year. <laughs> uh, the day of month is lowercase, so it's ddmm. And I think y is lowercase, let me check. Um, it is lowercase. It's not local week numbering year, it's calendar year. So why, 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 like so. And we're going to put in the new date. And the reason you specify the new date is so that um, basically all of the other values, like for example, the, the time, which is not specified in the date of birth, gets filled in from the new date. Um, but then around this, it doesn't matter for us now anyways, we're going to format it. Uh, and then the format, I think, takes in the value first as well. I don't think they follow functional programming formats. Um, where you have the format first, but yeah, okay. So let's do, um, how do we do like third? Third day of month, day of month, D-O. Okay, great. So let's do um, D-O and let's put in the month standalone. What's standalone? No idea. Um, let's do this one, M, 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 and let's do Y, 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 Y as well. So something like that. Um, should format it and we reload and it breaks. Wonderful. Um, what's the issue here? Invalid time value. Why is that? Did this work properly? It did not. So, if, uh, wait a second. Ah, okay. So, um, let's change this to console log and let's see what that gives us. And we get invalid date. Wonderful. Why is that the case? Pause, 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 pause. Is going to take a date that's invalid. Why is that? Hmm. See, we know that pause equals pause. I actually don't know why, so I guess we can find out. Um, pause in 1901, 01. Oh, I put the date in the wrong way. Ah, stupid. Um, YY comes first. And then MMTD like that. This should work, please. Okay, wonderful. 23rd January, 1901, 15th February, 1902. So that's formatted it for us and um, everything else here looks quite nice as well. So that's all good. Um, so now we have the formatting set up, right? So we have something that, you know, we have an ID name and we have a customized date of birth and we have a favorite food. So now, if we're going to change this into something that we want to uh, be able to, you know, render within some form of reusable table, what is that going to look like? And what are we going to prioritize? Well, what I'm thinking right now is I want to be able to do some degree of pagination, right? So we can go from page one to page two to page three, but we still have the flexibility to render a table. So let's kind of start from there and let's see how this whole thing plays out and how we uh, build it and put it all together. So. Let's go over here and add in, um, let's call it use table as well. And I'm just gonna put it inside of, and you know what, let's not put it in root. Let's do a uh, new file. I'll just do hooks, use table, and we'll put it right here. So do something like that. Put in an index file and we'll export it like so. And we have our hook right here. We const use table like this. And then export default use table. So now we have used table set up, um, we're going to need to pass in the data or we're going to maybe uh, have a look at how you might use it. Let me first set up an alias because I like to use aliases. Hash root to be dot slash SRC. Does it auto reload for that? Maybe it does. Let's check it out. Um, import use table from hash root hooks use table. And hopefully that works, it does, wonderful. All right, so what we're gonna do now is pass in the data. So the data we need to pass in, obviously, uh, we have mock data, so I guess we could, you know, we use it something a little bit like this, so we might data, mock data like so. Um, and we probably also wanna pass in the columns. So 
for columns, I guess we can keep it relatively uh, simple for now, is the structure we might do a little something like this. So we might pass in, like, say, um, columns. Um, and we might define the columns here, right? So let's say we you know, pass this in as config. So we might do something like uh, label is going to be ID. Uh, and then we might say the accessor, or you, know, you can call it the property, whatever you want, um, might be um, just ID, right? So this is the ID property being passed in here. And let's say we uh, put a comma and then we can repeat that again. Uh, this one's going to be the name and repeat it a few more times. This one is going to be uh, date of birth. It's going to do here. And then favorite food, we might do like that. So we have our four columns being passed in and we might just do something like this. Um, and then from there, I guess this means that, you know, we can render uh, the things that we want onto our page. So we have our use table set up, we pass in our columns, um, we've also passed in our data, and then this is going to give us back something which we can then use to do other things. So let's go here and let's just say we have, um, let, let's first define a few things as to how we might use this. So just right now what I'm doing is without kind of, um, you'll notice that I'm making a lot of decisions, for example, like how we define columns or how we define data, and I'm not necessarily explaining all of them because in my mind right now, it's not really clear, you know, why I call it label or why I call it accessor. Um, is this going to scale? What kind of use cases will support it? I don't have the answer to that. But what I do know is that this is a sensible default, which will give me what I'm looking for first, which is to have use table run something. And then once use table runs something, then let's also think about, um, you know, how we're going to extend it. And what I have here is not like overly uh, complex and, you know, rigid to the point that it can't be extended. It's still, you know, not that much to begin with. So when we talk about extension, it's not something which is very difficult to do uh, later down the track. So that's kind of my justification uh, coming into this. So now let's just kind of move on. So just keep in mind that a lot of the decisions I'm making aren't necessarily super conscious. They're just kind of what I believe to be a sensible default um, before we kind of look at it in more detail. Um, so we might pass in say headers here, and this might be, you know, these, these headings and how we render those on the page. Um, and we might also, you know, get back um, headers and let's say rows, right? So then the rows might be the, the individual uh, rows of information that we get back down here and actually being able to use those um, that might be what we're trying to do here, right? So let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's start writing this out. So let's go here and let's assume that these headers will pass back um, information that lets us render each individual table header. Um, so it might be something like uh, headers.map and we might pass, we might get back a header like this. And we might do th and let's say the header has, hmm, well, this is a good question, right? Is how do we talk about the, um, how do we manage the individual keys in here? And what will that look like? Let's first use index for now. And then maybe later we can look at potentially some of the issues caused by that. So let's do say th key equals index. Um, and we have the header being passed back. And you know, the simplest way might just be the header, which is, uh, let's say this is the label actually being passed back here. Um, Maybe let's do header.label. So we'll do label like this, uh, like this. So just if we have other things uh, we want to add to that, it is a little bit more extensible. Um, let's remove these ones. And let's leave T body out for now. And let's just say this one is a T, cold span equals four. And this is a work in progress. So let's just keep it like that for now. Uh, and we are going to pass back the headers. So headers is going to be columns.map. And we're going to get the individual columns uh, label. So we're going to do uh, column, and this is going to return us label as column.label, for example, right? And we can do return headers like so. And this is kind of, you know, the, the bare, barest minimum to get this working. And we have, you know, these four now displayed on the top. Um, so now let's think about the data. So we've got rows. Uh, so for rows, we're going to do, you know, rows.map, and we get back, say, an individual row. Um, and once again, let's do a TR and let's do key equals index. This will almost certainly have to change, but let's just do that for now. Um, and then inside of here, we have the individual fields. So we might do say, for example, um, what might be a good approach here? Let's say row.cells. 
uh, dot map. We might have a cell, and the cell itself might also have an index. We'll do TD, TD, not TD, TD key equals index. And we might say, you know, um, we pass that, let's say, uh, cell dot, um, what do we call this one? Cell dot rendered value, for example, right? So we might have something like this, uh, and we can get rid of this work in progress one, uh, and let's return that. So let's get rows working, um, like so, and we can do, say, data dot map. And then data obviously gives us each individual row. Um, and this one is a little bit harder to work with because each um, put this on data row will do something like this. Uh, and now we have to consider the columns. So we are getting in um, an accessor and a label. And right now the accessor is just the property and we're going to display that as the value, right? So inside of this data row, um, we can do say a uh, result is equal to um, columns.map. And now we're going to get the accessor um, as the main thing. And we're going to use the accessor to get back data row accessor like so. And this is actually um, the rendered value. So we can do const rendered value is equal to data row accessor. And we can do return rendered value like so. And we can do that. Uh, and then we're going to return the result like so. And we have headers and rows and we can save this. And we refresh and the page is broken and wonderful. Uh, and it is because map is undefined in root because row.cells. Okay, um, so we can do cells, call this on cells as well, uh, and that should do the trick. So now we have everything we had before, sort of. Um, notice how the date of birth isn't really great anymore. Um, we have ID, name, date of birth, favorite food, and we have things kind of back to um, where they were a little while ago. So we kind of took a step back, but let's get the date of birth uh, fixed up as well. So now what we're going to do is look at how we might transform the data birth. So we've got our accessors here and accessor right now is a string. So it takes in a string, um, you know, in TypeScript terms, this would just be obviously the string type. Um, but maybe what if we had the ability to pass in also a function? So the function might be something like, you know, it, it might return us say, um, you know, we, we might take in, for example, uh, some sort of any, or so, you know, the data, some form of like object, you know, we might be passing in, um, in, in like TypeScript terms, it might be like, say, you know, the, the particular row. So it would be say, you know, key string and the value might be any, and it might return us, you know, some form of like react node or something that can be rendered. Um, so that might be part of the signature we want to adopt. But in our case here, what we're going to do is take that data birth, so this is a function that somehow has access to data birth. Um, and we're going to be taking this whole section here and putting that right here, right? So now we have this successor and we have a data birth in there. Um, and now what we're able to do is go into, uh, where are we, accessor. Accessor right now is used like this. So what we can say is type of accessor, if it's equal to a function, we can run it um, whilst passing in the data row. So this is critical, right? is giving it the data row allows us to access data birth here. So we do that, alternatively we do that. And then that should give us our data birth formatted. So we have 23rd January, 1901, 15th February, 1902. And you know, you can obviously um, also become, you know, fancier with this as well. So instead of just returning this, um, let's just say that, you know, um, a very basic example is, you know, I, I see this potentially being uh, extensible, you know, you might pass in a, a span like this, uh, and you might, you know, put curly braces here, and then you might pass in a button, and the button might just say edit, for example, and you can imagine how you might implement this uh, separately so that you can, you know, edit your data birth, and the edit button is very small because I <laughs> changed the text size. Um, but that's kind of, you know, where this takes us in terms of the direction is it gives us the ability to not only just work with uh, customized strings, but you saw how in my example before I did uh, React Node. So it actually kind of, because of the way this is rendered, this can be any valid React node of which strings are obviously a type, but they're not the only valid one. So it could also potentially be, you know, uh, a button or it could be another component and you could pass in different things uh, via your column configuration. 